morning and welcome to the studio here at African Utility Week. My name is Claire Falkvane and I'm the editor of Metering and Smart Energy International. With me this morning I have Ben and Banner who is the head of off-grid renewable energy for the Ugandan Rural Electrification Agency. Ben and thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you. Now when we were talking a little bit earlier you were uh, giving me some insights into what Uganda's plans are with regards to rural electrification and I was wondering if you could tell our audience what it is that your current electrification rate is in Uganda and what you anticipate or are aiming for in the future. Our current uh, electrification levels at um, the national electrification is at 15 percent on grid and an additional 5 percent off grid, so that's 25, 20 percent. Our plan is to have 30 percent by 2020. Uh, the rural education rate is at around 7 percent and our plan is to take it to 26 percent by 2022. Wow, that's a very ambitious target. Yep. So obviously um, your big focus is renewable energy and um, I was wondering if you could talk to me about some of the challenges that you are experiencing with this drive um, to achieve uh, such an aggressive target. I think our main challenge is um, our settlement patterns, which are mainly sparse, and that makes it more expensive to do grid extension. Uh, that's why we have to use uh, a number of approaches. The grid extension to the major load centers, so mainly we have trading centers, we don't have traditional villages. And then we have mini grids, which are mainly powered by renewable solar, mainly okay. solar, for the concentrated settlements that are far from the grid. And the majority of the other population which are scattered will be using solar home systems. The system that you are, are using, could you talk to us about how that system works? Um, the, the costing thereof, I'm assuming finance is always a challenge. The financing is always a challenge. Uh, mainly our financing comes from uh, three sources. We have our budget allocation every year, but we also have a 5% levy on the, trans on the sales from the generation to the transmission company, which comes the rural education funds. And then we also have uh, uh, funding from our development partners, either grants or loans. So we, we have been um, I think we have attracted uh, fairly good sub, uh, funding, which we, have, um, which we are using. And how closely do you work with the local utility when it comes to this rural electrification? Or is this something that your agency handles by yourselves? So in Uganda, we have uh, first the main utility, which inherited the, fa the, the original government Parasteto, and then we have also created another 13 utilities within the country. So our role is mainly to do the financing, we do turnkey contracts, which we hand over either to the main utility, which is Umeme, or the other 13 uh, smaller utilities. And then the 13 smaller utilities also support them so that they can be able to mature into big utilities and self-sustaining. And with regards to the, um, the some of the, the challenges again, how, how are you uh, positioned in terms of skills, uh, sufficient skills within your, your sector and um, the kind of post, post installation challenges? I mean, are there, are there challenges around uh, maintenance and upkeep or, or tampering with these systems? I, I think the challenge is not mainly in the skill set because we, we have institutions that are, that are training professionals uh, both at the graduate level, at the postgraduate level and at the technician level. Mm -hmm. And we also have like in-service trainings um, institutions that are able to do that. I think the biggest challenge on the maintenance has been the vandalism, the vandalism of transformers uh, which is a big challenge of um, people trying to steal uh, maybe the windings or the oil inside. Yeah. That's the biggest challenge that we have. Now, now the feel-good question. Um, 
How have you seen communities transformed once they've had access to electricity? I think the transformation of communities is great once electricity comes in. Uh, on the business part is that they're able to start new businesses that they haven't thought about or they couldn't do at that time. Then on the social part of it, you are able to pump water, or you have clean water, you are able to uh, run efficiently health services, education systems, uh, you are able to have evening classes in addition to ICT in the schools. Also, you are able to um, the, the, you see the growth of, of the centers that you are putting even before you bring electricity when, when they know electricity is coming the land prices go up and the building boom starts so in, in a period of like two years the center is completely transformed and have you found that uh, bringing electricity in also attracts more people to specific regions um, or, or does the population of that specific area stay pretty stable? No, I, I, I think the population doesn't stay stable because people are attracted to where infrastructure is. Mm -hmm. So once electricity goes on a trading center, then there is migration into that area. And therefore demand grows and opportunities for economic development uh, appears. I think it's absolutely wonderful what you're doing and um, I wish you really all the best in, in, in pursuing and driving this, this very uh, important task that, that, that you're about. Unfortunately, we don't have any uh, more time available for us this morning, but I would really like to thank you for your time and for making yourself available to chat to us. Okay, thank you for having me. From African Utility Week, I'm Claire Falkvane. Thanks for watching.